Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 14 of my BB-8 version 3 build. I've done quite a lot of testing on this in the last episode, so be sure to check out part 13 to see it driving, including in a large space which was an empty shopping centre early in the morning where it drove around in a big circle. So there's quite a lot of testing there. In this episode, I'm going to be doing some more painting, detailing, generally getting the cosmetics finished, and then there's one more episode for smart panels, which you can find out about next time. Before I start, I'd like to give a shout out to Eric from Rolling Robots. Now, Eric is doing his own investigation into different BB-8 mechanisms. If you haven't seen enough of mine, he's got lots of different ideas. And also, he's doing some material testing. So, Eric has a Facebook group called Rolling Robots, which pretty much anyone can join. And he's taking suggestions from the community. He also has videos in his YouTube channel and there's quite a lot of explanation about what he's doing and what he's attempting to do and some of those mechanisms as well as videos in the Facebook group. And he also has his own Patreon campaign which is raising money and some of those goals and rewards are about testing different types of filaments. Obviously all of that uh, stuff can be quite costly so he's raising money to do some proper material testing so other people don't have to. So Eric is one of my patrons who supports me, and if you want to support me on Patreon to make more awesome projects, check out the link in the description below. But let's have a closer look at this droid. Last time I did some of the head details, including this cutaway section, and we've got another one here which has got real electronics in it. And there's a tilt switch in there, so if I tilt the head forward, the other lights and things come on. But we need to make a diffuser for the holo projector and this little thing here which I want to print in Ninja Flex. Now all these uh, details are flexible, so if the head falls off, they don't smash. We also need to do something about how sparse this is, because um, I can see all the way through it at the moment, which isn't what I really want. So probably gonna put some black foam in. I don't really want to add any more weight though. So the other thing we need to do is add sounds and also do a little bit of weathering. So you can see the ball is already a bit scraped. I don't know how clear that is from here. Obviously around the centre track where it drives on various floor surfaces, it's got scratched and so on. So it is going to have to be weathered a little bit, but hopefully nothing too excessive. The other side panels, in contrast, are completely pristine. So we need to try and match those up a bit. Right, those have printed, so I've got one tiny piece here. And these have been printed in what's called water clear Ninja Flex, although it's not quite clear because of the extrusions. And this is the holo projector lens, which as you can see is quite squashy. And that should fit in there. Probably glue those in as well. But for now, we'll just stick that in. It might have to go in a bit further. So now if I tip the head, it yeah, seems to diffuse quite well. Yep, pretty happy with that. For the main eye lens, I've got hold of another one of these lights, which was very cheap as you can see. And basically this has a bulb in and a battery, but the lens is exactly what I used in version two, which I can take out of there. And we can get the clear lens and cut it down to push fit into that Ninja Flex eye socket. Having taken it to pieces, we can see there's some things, a light bulb and some other bits and pieces we don't really want. And this, which has just got a piece of paper in it would seem with Lightning McQueen on. That gives us this rather nice clear lens. I've just pushed it into the Ninja Flex socket there. So there's a big reflection of the light I'm using. But anyway, I've just pushed that in a bit further as well. So yeah, pretty happy with the look of that. I think that's probably okay. I've just stuck a bit of black floor mat foam in there. So I think that's probably gonna have the desired effect. Just come out a bit. There's still a bit of white in there. I should have probably painted the inside black, but at least you can't see all the way through the head and out the other side. Obviously that's true for the back as well. So it just kind of makes it a bit darker inside. And that's probably gonna have to do, mainly because I can't add too much more weight to it. Here's my sound setup for this BB-8. So I've got this time an amp, which I got in Maplin in the UK, I think, a few years ago. It's been in my spares box for a while. It's only a three and a half watt amp, 
but I've got this speaker, it was out of a Bluetooth speaker that's got a really big magnet on the back. And again, I'm using the Adafruit soundboard and you can have a look at version two to see how I got the sounds. So now it's pretty loud. <laughs> We've got all the sounds and I think I'm gonna put that into the body um, as I did with version two, because it's quite a heavy speaker and I don't want the inertia of it being carried around in the head. I've mounted the electronics quite neatly on there and I've made this 3D printed bracket with a thing on the back, which I'll show you what that is in a moment. Obviously a hole for the speaker to fit and the electronics are gonna just mount on there and then this whole thing mounts in one side of the droid. And I'm going to mount it just on here. So this piece here is going to sit on this battery mount, for want of anywhere better, just in there. So the speaker will be sort of pointing out of that side panel, which fits in for my plans for the next episode for smart panels. All right, so I've mounted it just in the side there. It's all wired up on to one of the pins, which is now triggered by the remote. So if I hit a button on the remote now, which is this button, we should get the sounds. It's time to do some painting and weathering. This is never going to be a clean, shiny droid, and as you can see around the middle where it's driven, it's already quite worn. Uh, this was also from putting tape on to hold these panels on when I glued them, and glue seeping under the tape, and then pulling the tape off, and that pulling off uh, large amounts of paint. So I need to really touch that in. I'm just going to mix up some yellow and red acrylic, in fact, and try and get a similar orange, because that's going to be quite weathered anyway, rather than try and mask it off again and then try and spray it up and uh, potentially cause any similar issues with pulling the tape off. The foam PVC isn't particularly tough, so it's easy to score to mark these sections, but uh, not a very hard-wearing surface, and that's an ongoing theme. So there is going to have to be some weathering, because it's never going to be perfect. Obviously, these... Uh, Panels around the middle are a lot more worn out than the ones that fit on separately, which are kind of pristine, so I need to match it up a bit. But I don't want to go overboard like I did with version 2 and make it really dirty, but it has got to be weathered essentially. And also want to bring out some of the details in the head. The head's fallen off a few times, so it's already marked, so again I need to sort of cover that. And if it gets further marks, I don't want to uh, sort of be able to tell that that's the case. So that's the main reason for weathering it marks you can see there um, so we can sort of cover it and we can limit any uh, potential for it to look worse than it is already I've mixed up some raw umber and yellow acrylic and I've just mixed up some dirt here which I'm essentially going and rubbing into the seam lines. Had a go there, obviously it's uh, pretty bashed up anyway. I'm just using a cloth here to work it in with a bit of water to try and get some shading and then I'll come back and put a darker colour probably into those seam lines. Anywhere is excessive, I'm just gonna knock it back as I did last time with a sanding pad, which will almost take it back to the white. And just leave some grime there literally in the seams really. My strategy for these parts, which are completely clean and smooth, is basically to rub loads of paint in here, go over with a bit of a damp cloth, just clean off any excess really, it's far too dark at the moment, and then get the sanding pad again on a fairly fine one, just work that back, and take it away where I don't want it.
I want some marks on there and I'll probably come back and do some highlights in some darker colour. We just want it to be sort of vaguely dirty really, something like that. I've already done the other one as well. Just a little bit of dirt on it. The dirt seems to be working its way into these lines pretty well, so we'll leave some white in the middle of the panels. There we go, just so it's not brand new anymore. I've done a similar thing to the head, not too excessively dirty, just a bit of weathering here and there. Mixed colours, so some of it's a bit sort of greeny yellow. Around the front there I've done some darker colours in the just the raw umber and a bit of a mix down there. So yeah, nothing too excessive, just shows up these lines a bit. The lines of course around there that you can see, it has to match the body to some extent, so not too much to keep that clean, but uh, there we go, I think it's in keeping with the rest of the droid. It's about an hour later, now coming back and looking at this with uh, fresh eyes, I can kind of see that I haven't got much uh, kind of definition here, so we've got these large patches, this is where the ball is really messed up, so I've kind of wiped dirt on it and sanded it back, but it hasn't really gone because it's really in the marks. And you can see that particularly badly on this side where um, there's a massive scar there, which I have covered up with a bit of darker paint, but um, essentially there's not much definition and you can see the ball is really messed up there. So I'm just gonna get a darker color and go around and do some highlights and try and match that with the side panels as well. So we're gonna get some of that raw umber without mixing it down just uh, get that right in there, sort of just here and there, get some paint in and highlight that up. The paint's dried so I'm just going to go and rub those highlights down a bit and fade them back so they're not perhaps so excessive in all places apart from here where there's some real damage. So I need to cover that and here we can just take that back a bit perhaps around here. Just tone it down a bit. That piece is damaged so we'll leave that and there we go, we'll just keep doing that all over and I think that should be it before I ruin it any more than I have. So here it is, a bit more uh, reserved than version 2 which literally had loads of black around it. Um, obviously there are some parts that are damaged that I can't really avoid uh, having the weathering in but on the whole I'm kind of pretty much okay with that. There's possibly some more there I could remove back but uh, if I don't stop doing it then I'll carry on forever and it will never be finished so there we go pretty happy of how that is in its current state anyway so there it is all painted up pretty sure that's okay for the cosmetics it's uh, not too dirty but definitely is weathered and hopefully that covers up some of the damage that I've uh, already got on there there's a few sort of patches that are more weathered than others but on the whole, pretty happy with how that looks overall, I think. So although the cosmetics and sounds are done now, um, the series is basically officially finished. So this is a perfectly good drivable droid with all the features and all the cosmetics done. Obviously, um, you can't really hear the sounds now unless I put my mic really near. Because they're inside BB-8. So there is going to be one bonus episode to come back and do smart panels and one of those of course will be an opening door on this side that lets the sounds out which will flip open while the sounds play and then shut again. There's obviously some design to do there because I can't easily use slip rings this time because of the big trousers thing that moves side to side which have cut the wires off. I also want to do another smart panel on the other side which is going to be a very much requested feature but I haven't started any of the design yet so it's going to be a few weeks until that actually gets done. 
So don't forget to subscribe and check out the last update on this project in the future and also check out the other projects in my channel and the social media links in the description to this video.